It's fascinating listening to Heather talk about her approach to riding and teaching, and I'm sure we've all gained inspiration from not only what was said, but also her candid and friendly manner. To accurately illustrate her methods, she decided to hop on Ray, one of her schoolmasters, to demonstrate how important the seat is and how little contact is actually needed to get great results. We started filming in the indoor arena where I initially asked her, what can go wrong with conventional teaching? Uh, it's the fact that A, saddles put the rider entirely in the wrong position so that you've got the stirrup bars are too far forward so the rider's having to fight this all the time whereas when you design a saddle that allows the rider to sit in the right balance I know for a fact that my saddler who you saw in those videos on YouTube his first time ever on the simulator and then on a real horse no way if you put him in a typical GP saddle would he have been able to do what he did it just puts you in a chair seat doesn't yeah, it? yeah absolutely and then the other thing is the daft idea of teaching people that you know for instance sit deeper relax your lower back go with the movement follow the movement that's even more stupid because normally if you're following something you're behind it and instead of telling them the, the precise movements of the lower back and pelvis that you need in order to be able to absorb the movement of the horse and synchronize your movement with that of the horse and that for me is the most important thing of all because you know, what do you want to teach a beginner? It's how to stay on. And if you just teach them, sit deeper, they crunch themselves down, sit um, or relax the lower back or relax your back or what have you, and then just go floppy, follow the movement, well, they haven't any idea what that means. And so, and yeah, and, and that to me is, is where it goes, all, all goes wrong. And as I said in my book, you know, I learned to sort of evaluate what the rider's doing. I watched cowboy films and I could see that they were doing very different things with their back to me and I was only in my mid-teens at the time I suppose and I was thinking well how do they manage to sit so much stiller than I do and I was mucking about on a race exercise saddle that belonged to a friend of mine with the stirrups up like Lester Piggott at the time and I suddenly realised whatever I was doing I was sitting to the trot much more glued and so I rushed back to the stables and got a saddle that enabled me to sit normally and uh, and I realised that whatever I'd found was, you know, the, the secret of actually adhering to the saddle and look as if you're doing virtually nothing. Well, you know, I'm now rising 62 years old and I've hardly sat on a horse for a year and a quarter due to my parents' illnesses and whatnot. And so I am, I've also got an osteoarthritis, I'll get it out in a minute, in my hands and my spine. So I'm a lot stiffer than I used to be. But at the end of the day, you know, I can still sit reasonably well to the horse's movement. And so, but if I was sitting in a lot of the positions that, the, you know, people will put you in, instructors, you will actually end up going against the horse's movement rather than with it. And so what you'll often see, for instance, in sitting trot is the good old dressage riders nodding head and flapping lower legs. <sighs> Don't know how they see where they're going. And also, if I'd normally got my contact lenses in, I think they'd fall out. But all that you need to do is know that your seat bones need to rise and fall with the two sides of the horse's back so that they're separate. And just as we would make in walk on foot, your seat bones will move separately as your leg moves forward and back. And so in walk on a horse, my seat bones are rising and falling with the two sides of his back here. Now, if I went to push him with, you see a lot of riding schools, you know, where the rider's trying to get the horse to go and they're pushing like mad with the seat and kicking then with the legs and everything. Sorry, Ray. <laughs> and, you know, but that's what happens and it blocks the horse. And in fact, I was up at David Broom's a few years ago doing a lecture demo up there for a riding club. And a lady came in on a horse. She wanted to try one of my saddles too. And I could see her saddle was very tight. But she came in and she's pushing away like this. And the poor horse, you know, he's just creeping along. And then I put a different saddle on one of mine and showed her how to use her legs just with the swing of the belly. So I'm using my left leg when his belly's swinging to the right, right leg when the belly's swinging to the left. So the horse gratefully strides out. And she said, what's he doing? I said, he's walking. And she said, no, this must be some other pace. 
She had literally never, she was quite a novice rider and had bought him from a riding school, so she'd never ridden him actually when he was going forward. But because what she's doing, she's tightening her seat muscles all the time, pushing against the back, and that stops the back from being able to move. Now, we use that very aid in a way, in, in a downward transition, but not by pushing against the horse's back. What we're doing is closing the seat and bringing the horse back because we're stopping the movement, our own movement with him. He feels the difference, still moving with him, but at the same time, he can feel that change. And, you know, when you think the horse can feel a fly land on his back, you think how much more he feels the rider. And most, a lot of people can't even keep him in a straight line. Well, you can see how little I actually need the reins here. If I want to turn him, I just advance my inside hip and a little pressure behind, my, um, behind the girth and he will, he will turn, but that will happen with any horse. And that's why I don't mind riding horses at lecture demos and things I've never seen in my life before. And it makes such a difference, you know, when you're completely confident that the aids that you're using, sorry Kay, are completely um, understandable for the horse. Now last Saturday I had a a nice big mare here, that um, warm blood mare that showed show jumps, but she's never done any lateral work apart from a bit of shoulder, uh, leg yield. Last time she was here, I did a bit shoulder in with her, but on Saturday afternoon, I had her doing traver and half pass, and the owner just couldn't believe her eyes, you know, because she's never ever done it before. But it's because I'm working totally in sync with her, so that, for instance, I asked her to do traver, so I just turned my body towards the wall, outside leg behind the girth, flexed her to the inside, and she immediately understood, and I'm using my left leg with the swing of his belly, with the swing of the belly, so it's at that moment which the hind leg is coming under and across, so you're engaging the outside hind leg and driving it across, but it's also then, as I use the leg with the swing of the belly, it's taking my inside hip and seat bone forwards and diagonally with it, so I'm then moving entirely in sync with the two sides of the horse. And if I ask him here to do a half pass, same thing again, it's the same movement except on the diagonal. So I'm using my left leg with the swing of the belly, with the swing of the belly, with the swing of the belly like that. But you see, you see a lot of people doing this and trying to push the horse sideways. And look what's happened. A, he's gone back to, he's not bent the correct way. And they're all being taught to do far too much or just not given clear enough instructors instructions that they start to find their own ways of doing it, which are not necessarily the best, or working in sync with the horse. So the whole idea, you'll see here Kay in rising trot. She's just slightly forward of the vertical, so if I take him up to rising trot, if I start to go too upright, riding school plod again, because I'm coming down on the back of the saddle and causing his back, whoops, to drop, and so he then raises his head. He can't engage his hind legs, so he can't move forward. So by inclining the upper body slightly forward from the hip, I'm landing very lightly then in the saddle. And it means that he can move forwards very easily. The other thing that most people are just not taught what to do or how to do it. And you notice there I went through rising trot, not walk. Uh, or sitting trot rather, back to walk because I was taught that by my German trained trainer because it means you're staying off the horse's back and the horse is sort of catching you down, if you like, instead of people go rising trot, sitting trot, plonk. And of course then the horse drops his back and raises his head rather than raises his back and drops his head. So that's another thing. But you see so many people going off to on the wrong diagonal. But the thing is, when you're being taught right from day one to feel which dive you're on. So for instance, I know his left shoulder's coming back, 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 his right shoulder's going forward, 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 his left hind leg's coming under, 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 his right hind striking the ground, now, now, now. And I can tell all of that just purely what my seat bones are doing underneath me. If I was driving with both seat bones together, which is what I was doing when I was causing the nodding head, now I can't feel anything because my seat bones are no longer being separated by the two halves of the horse's back. So yeah, so that's basically how we teach all that sort of thing. Now, the lower leg is the other thing that is so important that people aren't taught, and that is to use the leg 
with that inwards and slightly forwards roll of the leg for forward movement. And you see people, even when they, they're told to squeeze, they're still doing that and gripping up and backwards. And what we tell people to do is to lower the little toe. Now, only yesterday we had on the forum somebody advocating um, that you, turn, you pull, the, pull the thigh out. Oh, and you, I thought, oh no, please, it's the opposite. Now, how can you possibly ride just correctly? Bring in and it, yeah, I've never seen a Devon horse that's that shape, you know, and not even an X ray horse. And so if your legs are out there, how can you possibly apply a leg aid? Apart from anything else, it's going to take a couple of seconds to just get back to the belly. So you can apply that leg aid. So the legs should just drape around the horse. Just run and then with, with a duck beneath. And yeah, and absolutely. Can, kind of and work. then you can get the lower leg around the horse. And it means then you can just apply the leg like that, as I did in that little video. Excuse me a minute. <laughs> Definitely runny nose for the... I think everybody will understand that in an English winter. But yeah, so we're just using the leg like that there and for behind the girth there. And when I touch him with the spur, it is just a touch, like that. Sure. Uh, it's not a poke or a prod. Same with Kay with, with Monty. He doesn't actually need spurs, although you have ridden him in spurs, haven't you? Yeah. Now I'm just going to pop him up to C-A-N-T-R in a minute so you can actually see the movement that we advocate in the canter. So the, the, same, the movement we make in sitting trot is actually exactly the same as you make when you run on foot. So your, your um, back is actually flexing, just as it will when you run. If you look at some slowed down footage of an Olympic runner, you'll soon see that and uh, see how much it flexes and straightens. So, right, C-A-N-T-E-R. It's a backward circle of the hip here. Whoops. Sorry, I'll be with you in a minute. K out of the way. So all I'm doing here, I'm advancing my inside hip towards the leading leg. Whoops, that wasn't a very good one. Good boy. Wait a minute. So that's it. Now what you'll see a lot of people doing is polish the saddle because that's what they're taught. Now, I'll tell you, it's quite hard with uh, Clarino seated riding trousers. You'd soon get a very warm bum, I think, doing that. <laughs> so, but also, when you think about it, the horse's back is trying to lift. And what happens is that you're pushing down against the back and stopping it from lifting. So you're actually blocking the movement by doing that. Wait a minute. Oh, you can do some Spanish in a minute. Sorry, Kay. And it means that even a stiff old old age pensioner like me can still sit to the canter if you're doing it correctly. And we'll leave it there with Ray's party pieces, Spanish Walk. In the next episode, We'll be focusing on retraining X racehorses with Heather as the first in a series eventually following the progress of some of our guys. Initially, Kay will be demonstrating exactly what can be achieved with her X racer Monty. Hopefully, we'll see you then. Please